All right, welcome into another Future Stocks video interview. And joining me uh, for, I don't know, probably the 10th time, Gavin Sheets. Uh, we haven't talked in a while, Gavin, but uh, I'm glad you could do this again. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, so uh, last time we talked, I'm trying to think. I would say it was probably, was it last summer before everything, before yeah. we figured out what was happening? I yeah, I think right before the shutdown, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before the, uh, the second spring training. That was, that was a while ago. Um, so you're out in Arizona now. Um, first off, like... How good does it feel to be? I mean, it's not it's not 100 percent normal, but I mean, you're still it's closer to normal than things have been. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, obviously taking a while off um, just to be out here with the guys. I mean, just clubhouse banter, being around the guys, living with them. Um, that, that's stuff you miss the most. I mean, obviously, the baseball stuff is it, you, you miss it a ton. But um, just being around your teammates and, and some of your best friends that I haven't seen for you know almost a year. Um, just that part of it feels so nice. I mean, obviously the COVID protocols and everything are all new. Um, and that's, that's just the world we live in right now, but being able to, to pull the mask off and go out in the field and hit and take batting practice and be around the coaches, be around the teammates. It's, it's super refreshing. Uh, we're going to, we'll talk about baseball in a second. Um, but you said you're living in Vaughn and I talked with, I spoke with Andrew before, um, I spoke with some of the guys and one of the biggest topics was golf. And yeah. I know that Vaughn's pretty, from the consensus that I've heard, Vaughn is the best. And then your name is like right there with him. What, uh, what do you, do you think you're better than him? Oh, I'm better than him. Yeah, I, I, smack, <laughs> I smack him around on the course. But he, we, we were paired up with teammates the other day, and we, we won that match. So uh, we beat Collins and Mendick. But okay. um, that was fun. No, I love getting out here and playing some golf, and especially leaving Baltimore right now with five inches of snow on the ground to get out here and <laughs> – have 70 degree weather it's uh it's awesome but yeah golf's been it's getting bigger and bigger in the clubhouse i think the uh the pandemic made a lot of guys start picking it up as well so um no we really enjoy getting out there and playing awesome um baseball wise uh, you know we talked before last summer and you know it's no secret that you know you were not i mean who wouldn't be not not thrilled about not getting an invite to, to sean Murray instead of you know, pouting and, you know, whatever, you use that as motivation. So kind of kind of take me back then and then kind of go through how you use that as fuel to get where you are right now and to get ready for the season. Yeah, I mean, it was tough. Um, you know, I've talked about it with a couple people, but, you know, it was obviously it, it was it was a tough time mentally and physically. Um, you know, I was geared up to, to get ready to play and I thought I was going to be there. And, you know, it really wasn't even in my mind that I wouldn't be there. Um, so obviously getting the call from Getz saying that, you know, I wasn't going to be there and here's why. Um, it, it was tough pill to swallow. Um, you know, I, I knew that I could do two things. I could pout about it and, you know, use the time and waste it or I could, you know, get better. Um, so I used that motivation and uh, obviously outfield was on the table. So I, I got my body in physically better shape, um, got baseball better. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think looking back on it now, where I am as a player now, I think it, it paid off. Um, but at the time, man, it was it, it wasn't fun. It wasn't good. Um, but, you know, everything, God does everything for a purpose. And, uh, yeah, it was, it, looking back on it now, I can definitely see it. You've, um, you've added outfield to the, to the repertoire. Um, I can't remember. I, I know a couple of years ago we talked. Did you play outfield in high school or something, too? Or was Yeah, I only played I, – I actually only played outfield in high school. Um, okay. And then I went to, to Wake and I played first base. Um, played a little bit outfield in the Cape League my sophomore year, but uh, so it's not completely foreign to me. Okay. But it is it is completely different playing it professionally versus yeah, versus uh, in high school. Um, but no, it's it's been a nice transition. Um, it's been exciting to be a part of. It's um, you know, obviously when you have an MVP at first base, you got to find different ways to to get into the, the lineup. And uh, you know, I'm all for it. I'm bought into it. If it's you know, 50, I think it's going to look like probably 50 50 first base and outfield. Okay. Um, but Whatever gets me in the lineup, I'm, I'm willing to do. So, obviously, you know, playing high school baseball in the outfield is, like you said, much different than than, sure. uh, than uh, in pro. Obviously, the ball comes off the bat a little bit faster uh, yeah. in this at this level. But I guess one question I had is, you know, at first base, uh, obviously, the your, your arm, you're using your arm for different things in the outfield as in first base. Have you, have you right. done more uh, different kind of throwing exercises, obviously, for, for the outfield and trying to improve the strength in your arm, too? Or? Yeah, I've definitely tried to lengthen out a lot more long toss. Um, you know, one thing I think I was never able to use at first base was my arm. I, I think it's always been a strength of mine that 
I never really got to showcase. Um, I was always loved when I got to throw at first base or, you know, picks one off throw to second or double play. Um, so that's kind of my favorite part about the outfield now is that I can kind of showcase my arm. Um, I think it plays in right field, left field. Um, so, yeah, but obviously lengthening out more, trying to stay on top of the ball more, um, not as much of an infield sidearm throw. Um, but, yeah, I think that's a fun part. I love getting out there and throwing it and letting it rip. Uh, going back to, so I remember talking to you at the end of 2018, and I remember one thing you told me that going into 19, you were, you know, the, it was the secret, you know, that you needed add, to add more power to your, yeah. to your, to your plate or to the, uh, at the plate. And then at the end of 19, I think you started off slow in 19 and then picked it up in 19 down the stretch. Have you continued to build on that approach in, in trying to incorporate more power in your swing? I mean, we all know you have that, but I think you, you told me that you were more focused on gap to gap before. I mean, yeah. is that still, where's your approach, I guess, to play now? I think Birmingham season was, was huge for me mentally. Um, you know, I think it kind of quieted a lot of people in terms of it, is the power still there? Um, you know, not many people hit 16 home runs in that ballpark recently. It's, it's a big ballpark. It's a tough league to hit in, um, you know, and obviously the RBIs as well. So I, I think it was bigger for me to kind of, you know, prove to everybody, hey, like I can hit home runs. It's there. The power's there. Um, so now it's for me, it's not as much, you know, I, I think in the beginning of that season, I was so focused on, all right, I got to hit home runs. I got to start off to a hot start. I got to just quiet everybody. Um, and, and then once I got going and started hitting them and then, you know, said, it doesn't really matter what they say. Um, you know, you just got to stick to what you do. And, and then it started to just pile on after that. I started to swing the bat better. Um, I got kind of that focus of where I got in the plate and expected to do damage. I think that's the biggest thing for me is when I walk up to the plate and I, I expect to do damage, you know, it's not as much hoping to do it or just trying to make contact. It's, you know, I'm, I'm in this batter's box to do damage. And I think that was the biggest change for me from, you know, high A to double A. Um, I think it was more that, that college approach I had where, you know, I'm in the batter's box. I'm looking to hit the ball to the ballpark. I'm looking to drive the ball in the gaps. And I think that's what I've built on the, the most. And I think that having a successful season in Birmingham was, was the biggest part of that was just the, the mentality at the plate. Um, and now I just build off it. I mean, I, I, I put up the numbers now. I know I can do it. Everybody knows I can do it. And so now it's, it's not as much proving people wrong as it is just going to the box and, and doing what I'm capable of doing. It's funny. So I, I was talking to, to Cole Roeder, uh, he's an outfield for the Cubs um, two days ago. And we were talking because we were talking about the end of the 2019 season. And like I said out loud, like that's the last time you guys have played games. And then thinking about it right now with you again, that, that's so weird to think about. Like that was the last time yeah. that you played a an actual game. I mean, you've, yep. got to be, you've got to be raring to go here for the, even these spring training games coming up. I mean, you've got to be you've got to be so excited. I can't wait. Yeah, I was I was able to go out um, in the fall in October and play oh, the sure. fall league thing, um, which was which was awesome to get out there and play some live games, be in the outfield, do that stuff, and um, had some success in the games. But man, it's just nothing like right. getting out to regular spring training and playing some games that really matter, and and you know lacing up the cleats and putting on a jersey. Um, just small things that, that I took for granted that feels like so long ago. Um, so I'm really excited to get going again. Uh, you kind of touched on it in. Um... Scott Merkin kind of told me as well that you've uh, dropped a little weight, uh, 15, 20 pounds or something yeah. like that. So what, yeah. what, have you, what have you done differently to, to, you know, to keep or to lose that weight, but then also to maintain the muscle? Yeah. So I think it's kind of the, I changed the way I trained a little bit. Um, I was able, so obviously being in the summer, I was able to, I, I switched trainers, um, but I was able to work out with, with some football guys, um, some guys with the Ravens and, so that was really cool for me. Um, it's a completely different mentality. It's cool working out with those guys because baseball and football is just a completely different mentality. Um, you know, what we do, the way we play the game, the adrenaline going on, it's just there's a calmness about baseball players that, that football players are just full go. And, and it was fun working out with those guys. It was fun. You know, it was a lot of D-backs. Um, so I was doing a lot of footwork, a lot of agility stuff, trying to get my feet better for the outfield, trying to be able to run better. Um, so doing all that stuff was, was really cool for me to, to be around those guys, push myself in different ways, do different drills, um, and, and test the body in ways I haven't before. So, you know, doing all that and eating better, all that stuff kind of got me down to, to, you know, 15 pounds lighter this year. Um, I feel a lot better. I'm just as strong, if not stronger. Um, but I just move better. I move better. I'm more explosive. And, 
Uh, that's I, I think that's really going to pay off not only for the outfield, but just athletically and, and hitting overall. Um, body explodes better. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to pay off in more ways than just the outfield. I think a lot, a lot of people maybe that didn't play baseball or they're not maybe just a casual fan. They look at outfielders and they just think of point to point speed. But, you know, really that that first couple step quickness. I mean, that's that's make or break in the outfield. For, yeah. I mean, you know, it's. It's a lot of, I mean, obviously the sprints and stuff like that, but I mean, did you work on like those quick movements as well? I mean, and for the outfield stuff too then? Yeah, probably more than sprint work itself. Um, I, just like a quick drop, drop step or reaction stuff. I mean, that first step, whether the balls beat you in the gap or you got to come in on it, I mean, that first step really decides if you're going to get to it or not. Um, you know, obviously your top speed is important when you get going, but if you start the wrong way or break the wrong way, it's, it, it can be the difference between a ball laying in front of you or a diving catch. Um, and so that was the biggest thing for me was just getting the first step quickness. Yeah. Unless you're Luis Robert. Right. Right. Yeah. Guys <laughs> like that. I mean, I, I, I don't have that speed. So my first step really has to be good. He can run in and run all the way back on and get to it. So Man, um, that, that I'll let him call me off on those. <laughs> hey, you're speaking of football players. Um, Luis Robert uh, could play football. Yeah, I mean, he's got the. He, he could play, he could play he a lot of. He, he could play any sport he wanted to. <laughs> That's a, he's a, an absolute freak of nature. Um, yeah. So, you know, coming, coming up towards this season, uh, you, you said, you know, 50 50 first base and outfield. And obviously, you just want to wherever you can fit in the lineup and eventually right. help the, the, the big club. Uh, what's, what are some things that you're kind of focusing on, I guess, going into the season, obviously health and helping the team win. I mean, that's for everyone, but is there anything in particular that you're kind of trying to improve on or turn heads about? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is just, you know, proving to the team that I can help them. Um, you know, I think being a left-handed bat is really important for our team right now. I mean, nobody hits nobody hits left-handed pitching better than the White Sox. I mean, our the right-handed hitters we have are better than none, um, second to none. Uh, I mean, if you look at our record, I don't even know if we lost a game against left-handed pitching. Even in the playoff game, we won, yeah. Yeah, so that's, you know, obviously left-handed power um, would be a huge help to this team or just a left-handed bat in general. Um, so – my job is really just to come in, um, not try to overdo it, not try to just be full go on power, um, just be a good hitter and just prove to this team that I can help them out and help them any way possible. First outfield DH, um, late inning pinch hitter. So just the versatility that I can bring. Um, but for me, it's just going out and just, you know, trying to play the best of my ability and, and show these guys that I can help them. And, um, you know, obviously we're, we're looking to win a world championship this year. And uh, I want to be a part of that in any way possible. Couple more questions. I'll let you run. Uh, obviously, new coaches uh, Tony and, and Ethan Katz are there. Um, you got some new players, Liam and, and Eaton. Eaton's yeah. back, I guess. And then I, I kind of said this um, the other day. And like, obviously, Kopech's been there, but he has not been there. So I mean, right. you're adding him. Piece. So yeah. Basically, like uh, adding him as well to the mix. I mean, have you? I, I know. I'm trying to think. Did you? You didn't play with Kopech at any level, right? I'm trying to. Think. No, I have not. No. Um, have you have you interacted with him? I mean, he looks like he's doing well on the mound and stuff. Have you talked to him at all out there? Yeah, I've talked to him a little bit. Uh, he seems like he's in a great spot. He's excited to be back. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really does feel like we picked up a free agent with him. I mean, you, you, you it's easy to forget that we, we didn't have him last year. Um, and that's a guy that's got Cy Young stuff. I mean, we've got adding Lance Lynn, adding Hendricks to the back end. I mean, we've got an unbelievable pitching staff now um, to go along with the unbelievable lineup. So it's, it, it's, it's exciting. I mean, this is as exciting time as I've been a part of this organization. Um, obviously, last year was a huge step forward making the playoffs. But I, I think now that we really have the formula, we've added the pieces that we need. Um, so this is – it's fun. It's fun to be a part of the rebuild in 2017 and now to see where we are in 2021. So um, it should be an exciting year. Have you talked to Tony Lewis at all? I have. I've met him. I've, I've been around him. Um, incredible baseball mind. I mean, you, you talk about someone that can lead a team to a championship and knows how to do it. Um, you couldn't find a better guy. Um, so I'm excited to play for him, hopefully, and um, just excited to see the, 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 what, what he brings to the table in spring training and see, you know, kind of the differences. And, um, you know, you give him a team like we have right now, I think that he's ex as excited as all of us. All right, Gavin, I appreciate your time, man. Uh, enjoy the weather out there and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're looking forward to seeing what you can do out there. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on.
No problem. It's Gavin Sheets, Peter Sox podcast interview.